A lot of controversy. I'm sure, Nick, you saw everybody's talking about the show on Wednesday. It was one of, mm-hmm. it was one of the highest-rated shows for AEW Dynamite all year long. But I want to go back to not the show on Wednesday, but last Wednesday. You know, we're, we're gearing up towards WrestleMania. WrestleMania is a celebration of pro wrestling. And there's been a lot of tribalism, I'm sure you know, especially when it comes to AEW and the WWE. A lot of finger pointing, a lot of name calling, a lot of battles on social media. Uh, Adam Copeland, formerly Edge in the WWE, took it upon himself to start off last Wednesday's show to kind of just, in his own words, put a stop to all the bullshit. He was like, we got to stop with the tribalism. This is a big week for pro wrestling. Let's enjoy it. Let's celebrate pro wrestling. He mentioned his time in the WWE. Some fans in the arena booed. He's like, no, no, don't boo. Like, this is all the same game, guys. Like, why can't we all be fans of everything pro wrestling? And I was like, this is awesome. And I said it on the show last Thursday morning with Bully Tommy and Mark out in Philadelphia. I was like, man, now that is opening up a new chapter in the history of AEW where it's like, all right, enough of the bullshit, enough of the tribalism. Let's just enjoy it. Like, instead of like pointing out the things you hate, let's point out the things that you love and let's be fans again. And let's stop with the bullshit. And I was like, man, this is awesome. And now we're at least going to get the high road from AEW. Then Wednesday night show happened, Nick. And I feel like you not only swerved off the road, you completely went on the wrong side of the road. It was now driving against traffic. Like, like we're going to get into the specifics of things that were said and things that were shown. But, man, when you make a statement to start off your show last Wednesday and then you put on the show that you did this past Wednesday, I mean, that's got to make you shake your head, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. And that, and that's fair. And the, the only thing I, I, I tried to rack my brain. I go, where is, where's the positive in showing this? And then I thought, okay, money, I I have New York one one burned to my brain. Where's the money? Is there a surprise? Are we going to make a joke of it? Are we going to pop a rating and bring some new eyes because we put this other story that people tracked right on? Or are we even going to put it at like the right top of the hour or anything and there was uh it didn't seem to be one of those it, i i don't understand it totally um it nothing was extra out of the ordinary ordinary i think best case scenario you see something different but then your audience still chants for a guy who doesn't work there that's in my head best case scenario but i was like okay maybe there's something here maybe they tie it into a story maybe that story is something even bigger and special or maybe we get some eyes on it you know just like in the old days like hey th- uh, 10 years ago stone cold or the rock is going to be on rock for a retro raw blah. here it comes you're like whoa this is a special thing and we're going to have all these legends on and then hopefully my match against uh michael mcgillicuddy gets some extra eyes that wasn't going to have it anyway or something like that and uh I don't know that that was accomplished. And uh, also when it comes to uh, doing like I, I, we've all done some things that we didn't want to do. I don't know who was in charge of, you know, allowed to go, Hey, this is what we want to do. This is what we don't want to do. But I least appreciate the, uh, the bucks turning it into a storyline of like, we're going to make this work one way or another. I don't know what creative freedom they had, what control they have no idea. Um, I just didn't love it. And I go, I hope they're going to some wrestling story with it that we can just use it as a jumping off point and then never mention it again. And you kind of got your thing that you got everyone talking about for two days. And, uh, and obviously the bucks and FTR, I'm assuming going to go out of their way to make the story bigger and better and make their match. One of the greatest of all time, um, at the upcoming pay-per-view. And I hope that is the case. Um, I just didn't come away with anything that would be like here's a positive other than it, it's over now uh i was trying to think of one hopefully that story parlays into something bigger and they can just use a jumping off point but anytime someone is chanting for someone who does not work at your show multiple different times it is not great uh so it's kind of bummed me out yeah and we we took a lot of phone calls on the show yesterday we'll take some more phone calls today obviously on a false count anywhere friday nick 
But we didn't get one phone call yesterday where somebody was like, I loved it. I'm so glad they did it. That was great. And we actually took a lot of phone calls, Nick, from people that were in the building on Wednesday night, people who paid for a ticket to be there. And they were saying that as diehard AEW fans, that they were pretty embarrassed by what took place on Wednesday. I mean, again, I understand, Nick, that, hey, here's CM Punk. He's on Aria Hawani's show. Aria Hawani has a history with Tony Khan, and it's not a good one. So it's a bit piling on. And I can understand Tony Khan being upset and saying, all right, I want to get my side out there or the truth out there or whatever his perception of what it is out there. But to me, you do that on an equal playing field. You do that on Ariel Hawani's show. You go on ESPN or you you come here on Busted Open, Nick, where I don't know if you know this, Tony Khan used to come on this show every week. We gave him 30 minutes, said, here, Tony, here's 30 minutes, and he promoted Dynamite, and a lot of fans loved it. Some fans hated it, but I loved it because, hey, we're giving this new organization a platform. You're having a president of a company coming on the air. I thought it was great. And then without any explanation, he just pulled the plug, and he stopped coming, and we don't have the greatest relationship with AEW moving forward. Um, But but that's okay. That's going to happen. There's ebbs and flows. Um, but to, or use our platform to come on again and explain yourself to use your television show to do it to me is just like, like you said, makes me scratch my head because the star of that is CM Punk. He's not with your company anymore. Right. And like you said, there was an arena full of people chanting CM Punk's name. Yeah, it's I, I, I tried every way to see the positive and clearly uh, most people didn't. And, and it was possibly, hey. This was said about us a week ago. We just want to set the record trade. It might have been big, a big deal, but hey, maybe we can get a tie a story into it or something. And possibly the correct venue is uh, going on a podcast or coming on the show. Totally understandable. But also, it, hey, if if Vince is throwing things at a wall three or four years into buying WWE and trying different things, I totally understand. He goes, hey, we have some footage that we can make uh, something out of. Hey, let's try it. You know, I totally get that, especially if you're like, hey, I want my side out there too. And my side, you know, has footage that makes it crystal clear. But, you know, there was uh, there's I did not see a positive to it. Hopefully, hopefully the the Bucks and FDR take a storyline with it and then that's it. And you don't talk about it anymore and you don't get CM Punk chance during their segments. I hope. Nick, when you first heard that they were going to play the footage, did you think it was going to be a swerve or did you actually think they were going to play the footage of Jungle Boy and CM Punk? Um, at first I didn't think it was going to be a swerve, but I, I hoped it was, I was like, Oh, okay. Big mania week. Everyone's talking mania. Great. Let's, uh, you know, th- they're going to do something like, Hey, come back on Wednesday. Just to remember that place just, just broke some records, but we're here too, you know? And I went, Oh, cool. Okay. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be, they're about to show it. And the, the, the bucks make a joke of it or show some old foot. Like I was thinking like black and white three stooges footage or something. And they're just talking over it. I didn't know. Uh, I definitely thought it would be somewhat of a bait and switch or make a joke of it. And I thought that would be a good way to go. Actually. Um, if you're going to like grab onto that Saturday of WrestleMania week and get everybody talking about it, which they did. Let's, let's not say that they didn't. Everybody was talking about it. And even yep. the biggest naysayers of AEW fans or people online were like, I don't know what this is going to be, but and eventually everyone went to a negative tone. But beforehand, to get everyone talking in wrestling is kind of a big deal. And let's not overstep that because it is. Uh, whether it's for one night and you get people coming back or not, or you capitalize on it, that's totally a different thing. But to get everybody talking several days before your show on the biggest weekend of wrestling with, a huge, with the company, with, with all the money and the marbles, uh, dominating to get everyone talking about that Saturday through Wednesday. That, that's amazing. That's a feat in itself. And um, I will not like I, I say congrats on that going right. forward uh, after that edge speech, which which, by the way, you even you playing that again. I was like, hell yeah, man. We, we forget we're so used to complaining online about things that we feel like we have to be in these two teams. We have to be Republicans and Democrats fighting each other yep. online instead of just going, hey, man, these guys is all well, with 
<laughs> with politics, it's like, hey, they're all awful. Let's all be friends with wrestling. It's like all these companies are great, whether I hate yes. what doing or whether I love what they're doing. We all love it. And there's an audience out there. How cool is it to be a wrestling fan right now? Not just for those shows. We got busted open all the time. How great is it when you have these options to talk to other people about it? complain online and even like uh adam said you complain online you're still you're complaining because you want it to be better like whether you have it right in your head or not that's that's one way or another but i hoped it was going to be a bait and switch and then uh was told it wouldn't be and then that whatever that's fine um i was hoping they would come away with something bigger out of it and you'll find out next wednesday uh but i hope it led to something else and or at least putting it in their back pocket. They got everyone talking about it Saturday through Wednesday. Well done. And then now we go, hey, now check out our product. And if you don't like all the talking and theatrics that are done on WWE, we have a hell of an option for you over here on Wednesday nights and pay-per-views. Yeah. I mean, that, to me, stay in your lane, focus on what you're able to do and continue down your path. When you saw the footage of Jungle Boy and I'm sorry, you know, yeah, uh, Jungle Boy and CM Punk, Jack Perry. Did what? What did you think initially when you saw the footage? Um, I, I, I didn't. I go, okay. Uh, everything everybody kind of said was was happening here, and there was nothing. There was nothing except for funny pieces of like a big reveal of, can you believe this happened? Or it was just like, oh, but but then you have to take into account like. What like who started this? Is this assault? Are we showing assault on TV in you know in 2024 in a workplace? I don't know how this works. Uh, as much as a fake lawyer I am, I was like, oh, I I could be showing this in court and be like, oh, case closed. I don't know why this is on a TV show. But when I saw it, I saw nothing out of the ordinary that we had already heard about. And for the most part, except for, I mean, uh, Punk throwing a punch and tack trying to tackle him down or something. I, I feel like we all knew that already. I don't know what I. Except for like funny pieces of like uh, people in the background when you got to analyze it because there was just it just there was no payoff for anybody there. I didn't think. Yeah, and and maybe it's me because you know previously be before working on Busted Open, I worked for the NFL, and you see that that type of stuff all the time on the sidelines during training camp, players mixing it up, players throwing punches at each other, pushing each other. Like it's that that happens all the time. So when I saw it, I was just like. I didn't see what the big deal was. Now, listen, no, but everybody should feel safe in their workplace. But when you're dealing with athletes and there's competition and, you know, the, and I'm talking about not opposing players from teams. I'm talking about players on the same side, on the same sideline, on the same team. Once in a while, things get heated and things happen. So when I saw the footage, I was like, man, this is pretty tame compared to things that I've seen in the past. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing. Like there was, there was nothing like, I mean, I don't want anybody to be in genuine danger or injured, but there, it was like, I've seen stuff that we didn't release tape on in my 19 years, 10 times worse than that. Then, then afterwards you either get over it or somebody, you know, or you make something happen or someone's a problem. But uh, I was just confused a little bit by the, some of the fans to where some people were just like, oh, yeah, like you said, like this happens. It's it, But you have to for a lot of people forget in 2024, even though I'm a pro wrestler, I work at a place, a workplace in 2024. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go, uh, you go, oh, you know, that happens. You can if everybody agrees like, hey, that happens because we're all fighting for this spot. I totally understand. But say you're two people uh, on a movie set and you have a fight like that. One of them is going to sue the other for assault and win especially if there's video footage. So I think a lot of fans go, Hey, it's pro wrestling. They think we're in like the raw versus SmackDown video game. So it's like, Oh, if you're backstage, you might just get hit by a car and get jumped by a guy. And that's part of it. Like, no, no, no. That's, that's a part we put on TV for a TV show that we're making. That is not the job part. That's uh, it's 2024, you know, publicly traded company and, or, or at least uh, under another company's uh, umbrella to where you go, this is, yeah, this is a real life. This is not like everything is not the backstage of Raw versus SmackDown where you might get hit by a, tr a trash can over your head and you're like, oh, that's part of it. No, it's not. You're at a workplace and you have to be I, you have to feel safe. And if you don't, you might have to go elsewhere.